In this video, I'm going to answer the questions, how do option assignments work? What should you do if you're assigned options? And how do you avoid being assigned options in the first place? I'm going to share with you some of my real life positions and trades that I'm in right now to help you understand everything you need to know about option assignments. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. If you're already a member of our community, thank you for setting aside a part of your day to be here. If you're not already a member of this community, go ahead and click the subscribe button and bell notification. You'll be joining a community of traders and investors that are helping each other become more knowledgeable and profitable. In this video, I'm going to show you how option assignments work, what you should do if you're assigned options, and how you can avoid being assigned options in the first place. These are techniques and tools that will help take the stress out of trading options. What option trading techniques are you currently using? Are you selling puts, covered calls, doing spreads, or are you brand new to option trading? In the comments below, please let me know what your favorite option trading technique is or if you're brand new to option trading. And stay tuned in until the end of this video where I will share with you a really quick and easy tip you can use to make sure that the options you sell are not assigned to you. In the whole universe of option selling, 93% of options are not assigned. That means on average, in the whole option trading universe, only 7% of options are actually assigned. But even with that small percentage, as option traders, we can decrease the odds of being assigned to even less than 7%. But we must first understand what happens when an option is assigned and why do option assignments happen. Most or all the options that you'll be trading are American style options. That means that they can be assigned at any time until expiration. However, even though they can be assigned, that doesn't mean that they will be assigned. The reason is that almost every option has what's called extrinsic value. Let me show you an example of this. Here you see a position that I'm in right now. I have sold two contracts of the 3M December 18th $170 put options. In the red box, you see that the current market price of this option is $1.51. As you can see here on the chart, 3M is currently trading at $177.12. So the put option that I have sold is $7.12 out of the money. That means that 100% of this option's value at this moment is extrinsic. If the investor that bought this option from me were to exercise or assign this option, they'd be selling the stock at the strike price of $170. They of course wouldn't do that because out in the open market, they could sell it for $177. Because of that, there's absolutely zero chance of this option being assigned to me right now. Let's take a look at another example that's actually in the money. Here you see my position in Intel ticker symbol INTC in the blue box. I have sold the February 19th $50 put options. In the red box, you see that the current value of this put option is $4.74 per share. Notice that Intel is currently trading under this $50 strike price. It's at $47.02. That $50 strike put option I sold is $2.98 in the money. But the question is, is this option at risk of being assigned to me right now? The answer is absolutely no. Here on my portfolio tab, you see that this option is currently selling for $4.74 per share. The option is only $2.98 in the money. That means that in this position, there's $1.76 per share of extrinsic value. If this person were to assign or put the stock into my account at the $50 per share, they would lose all the extrinsic value of the $1.76 per share that the option currently has. Options are almost never assigned if they have extrinsic value left in them. Here you see an example of some put options that were assigned to me. Last week on November 19th, 300 shares of Realty Income ticker symbol O were put into my account because of the November 20th $65 put options I had sold in the previous month. The reason why the stock was put into my account was because as you can see on the chart, Realty Income was trading at $61 per share. It was over 6% or $4 in the money. There were only two days left until expiration and there was absolutely no extrinsic value left in this option. I actually had an order sitting out there to try and roll this position for a decent return. I was hoping that Realty Income would jump in price and fill the limit order, but it didn't happen. So I ended up being assigned the shares at $65. Keep in mind that when you're assigned shares, it's a totally random thing. If I remember correctly, there were several thousand open option contracts at my strike price in Realty Income. It just so happened that this time, when that random seller decided to assign those puts, the ones I had sold were randomly chosen. 
I knew there was an elevated risk of being assigned the shares. I actually didn't mind that the shares were assigned to me because I immediately sold some call options against those shares as well as lined myself up to begin collecting the monthly dividends that Realty Income pays. But what could you have done, let's say if you did not have the money to buy the shares? How do you handle a situation where you're selling options but don't have enough cash to actually buy the 100 shares per contract on the put options you're selling? There are two things you can do. The first is to add some cash to your account to cover the cost of the shares. Or the one that you'll most likely do, number two, would be to just unwind the position. All that means is that you reverse the position. So if 100 shares of Realty Income have been put into your account, or you had to buy 100 shares, then in order to reverse that, you would just sell the 100 shares. Then your account would be back to where it was before the shares were assigned or put into your account, plus or minus any profit or loss. We're going to discuss a little bit later in the video how you can really minimize ever having options assigned to you by using a technique that I use today. If you'd like more information on how to trade options in a smaller account, check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled, How to Trade Options Using a Small Trading Account once this video is finished. Next, we're going to talk about exactly what happens if you don't have enough money in your account to cover the shares that have been assigned to you. But if you're liking the video, why don't you do me a favor and tap the thumbs up button. It helps support the channel and it means a lot to me. And stay tuned in until the end of this video where I will share with you a really quick and easy tip you can use to make sure that the options you sell are not assigned to you. I remember the first time that I had a margin call. I'll be honest with you, it kind of scared me. I think a lot of newer option traders go through that same thing. But there's really no reason to get upset when options are assigned to you. If you don't have enough cash to cover the position and you do absolutely nothing about it by adding cash to the account or reversing the position yourself, then the broker who you have your account with will eventually reverse the position for you. It's important to know that brokers generally do not require you to have 100% of the cash you would need if the stock was put into your account or assigned to you. For example, here you see the amount of cash Interactive Brokers required me to set aside in my account for that position in Realty Income that was assigned to me last week. You see that even though I had sold three contracts at the $65 strike price put options in Realty Income, Interactive Brokers was only requiring me to maintain $3,735 in cash to cover that position. When the position was actually assigned to me, I actually had to use $19,500 of the cash I had in my account to buy the shares. I was prepared to do that. But if you're not prepared to do that, when you log into your account, you're going to see the difference of how much they had set aside and how much the shares actually cost. So in this case, if you had set aside $3,735 and then you had to buy the 300 shares at $65 per share, well, it's quite possible that if you didn't have any extra cash in your account, that your account would have a balance of negative $15,765. But again, it's not a reason to get upset or stress out. You would simply need to reverse the position and sell the stock that had been assigned to your account. It's that simple. The type of margin I have with Interactive Brokers is called portfolio margin. So as you can see, it really allows you to use a lot of leverage. I don't use leverage anymore, but if you choose to use leverage, just make sure you keep track of the positions that you have sold to make sure that you're prepared to either add cash to the account or reverse the position if the stock is assigned to you. Selling put options is my absolute favorite technique in option trading. But my second favorite technique is that once a stock has been assigned to me, like it was in the case of Realty Income, I then like to sell call options against the stock that I own. And that's exactly what I did here with Realty Income as you can see on the screen. On the 19th, the morning that I had been assigned the shares, within 15 minutes of the market opening, I sold the January 3rd Friday of the month $65 call options and received 95 cents per share. Since Realty Income is a monthly paying dividend stock, I should also be able to collect dividends for at least two months. Speaking of dividend stocks, if you're selling put options on dividend stocks and those stocks are assigned to you like Realty Income was to me, and you decide to keep the stock and maybe sell some covered calls like I've done here, then you want to keep an eye on the ex-dividend date. As you can see here, Realty Income actually goes ex-dividend on November 30th. That's five days from now. The dividend amount is just over 23 cents per share. The reason I want to point this out to you is that if that call option that I sold, if it has less than 23 cents per share of extrinsic value, then it's quite possible that whoever bought this call option from me will call the stock out of my account in order to capture that dividend. 
So keep in mind that if you're following the same option strategy that I'm doing here of selling call options against dividend paying stocks that has been assigned to you, and you don't want this stock to be called away from you, make sure that the call option you have sold has at least the amount of the dividend in extrinsic value left in it. If it doesn't, then either roll it out to increase the amount of extrinsic value in a short option, or just be prepared for the stock to possibly be called away from you. That's the main reason why I went out to January, because I got 95 cents per share, which is a lot more than what the dividend amount will be. If this person were to call the stock away from me to try to get that 23 cents per share in dividends, they'd be throwing away 95 cents that the option is worth. So they're of course not going to do that. If you'd like more information on how to roll over put options, check out the video in the link above and the description below entitled, How to Roll Over Put Options for a Living. At the beginning of this video, I told you I was going to share with you a really quick and easy tip you can use to make sure that the options you sell are not assigned to you. Here is how I do that. Here you see some of the alerts I have set up on the option positions that I'm in right now. If we stick with our realty income example here, ticker symbol O, notice in the red rectangle that I've set an alert to go off as soon as either the call or the put option that expires on January 15th, that's the expiration date of the covered call option I sold, as soon as either one of those options have only 25 cents of value left in it, then I'll get an alert. I set it at 25 cents to remind myself that I need to roll this covered call option if I don't want the stock to potentially be called away from me when it's about to go ex-dividend. Even if the stock is not about to go ex-dividend, I have alerts set so that anytime any of the options I have sold are nearly worthless, I get that alert that pops up and that reminds me to roll those options. In the case of a covered call, you can do it to avoid the stock from being called away from you or just to remind you to roll those nearly worthless call options out. In the case of a put, once it's lost almost all of its extrinsic value, it's time to close it out or roll the position to keep that cash flow coming in. Setting alerts on the strike price that you sold and the corresponding call or put option is a quick and easy way to keep track of how much extrinsic value is left in the options you have sold. By setting the alert on the call and put options at the same strike price, even if your option goes in the money and the value of the option say goes to like $5, by keeping track of what the corresponding options value is, you can keep track of the options approximate extrinsic value and can avoid the options from being assigned to you or put into your account, or in the case of a covered call, from being called away from you. Remember, only 7% of options are actually assigned. By keeping track of how much extrinsic value is left in the options you have sold, the percent of options that are assigned to you will actually be a lot less than even 7%. As you have more trades on, this will save you a ton of time because you won't have to look at your positions every day. Typically, I have around 40 positions on at any one point in time. By having these alerts set up, it saves me a lot of time and it will save you a lot of time too and will help you avoid having options assigned to you. If you'd like more information on how to roll over call options, check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled, How to Roll Over Covered Call Options Once You Finish This Video. One of the challenges of being a successful option trader is having access to new profitable option trade ideas. If you'd like daily or weekly information on the exact trades that we do, as well as the current option orders we have placed, consider becoming a patron at the link in the description below. You'd be receiving awesome information that you can use to become a better, more profitable option trader, all while supporting this channel. And a quick shout out and a big thank you to all of our current Patreon members. Thank you for your support. Check out the videos in the link above and the description below where I share with you exactly how much cash flow we receive on a monthly basis by selling options. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.